welcome. Thanks for joining us. We have another show of the nonprofit show, another episode, I should say. And uh, today I have to share is, let's see, is today Tuesday? So it's episode yes. um, 598, I believe. So we're coming up so close to that 600, which is oh, this. Oh, yay. So, so you <laughs> are, you're, you're in the 600th episode week. So thrilled Great. to have you here. Yes. So again, we have Margaret Brasta Poirier with us today, uh, Grants for Good, and she's here to talk to us about social media plus grants equals funding. So I'm excited to, to dive into this with you. Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, is still enjoying some much time off. We like to give each other some, some time away. I'm Jarrett Ransom, holding down the fort for her today. I'm also known as the nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. Julia and I are both extremely honored to partner with our amazing presenting sponsors. Those of you that might be watching, you can see their logos on the screen. But those of you listening, I'm going to give a verbal shout out. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so very much to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with the National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, and the Nonprofit Thought Leader. Please do yourself a favor, check out these companies because they are here to pour into your mission, help your bottom line, and help to provide the solution to your community problem. Hey, I mentioned that this week is our 600th episode, but that also means that you can find our previous episodes as well as this one later on today on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, Vimeo, as well as podcasts. So if you are a podcast listener, go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show wherever you stream your podcast and listen to us there. Margaret, welcome back, my friend. I am just Thank thrilled you. to have... Yes, thrilled to have this time with you. So what's been up? That I mean, that's an open-ended question, but but tell me what you and Grants for Good have been up to lately. Oh my gosh. Well, Jared, the last time we talked was probably about a year ago because I think I was episode 300 <laughs> something. That's what I remember. Oh my God. Um, that's the last time I was on the show. We've certainly been talking since then, but yeah, exciting stuff at Grants for Good. As you know, I started my nonprofit grant writing consulting company way back in 2009. So now more than 13 years later, we're working with just hundreds of people all throughout the US and Canada. I've even got some folks globally that are in my all about grant writing online course, which I can tell you a few things about at the end of the show. But yeah, we're just happy to be here and happy to be serving our nonprofit customers all over the place. So thanks I for having me back. Well, thanks for saying yes. I cannot believe it's been over a year. I feel like it was just, you know, last quarter, a couple of months ago. So uh, thrilled to have you back. I know I've shared your company and your amazingness with so many people um, because your first presence has really just, you know, um, been a milestone for me. So thank you uh, for as a colleague. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. So we're going to get super nerdy today and you're going to talk to us about social media and what that means for us when it comes to grants. So we, we're going to start off about how nonprofits need to be known before they can get grant funding. Tell us why that is. Exactly. Um, yeah, you know, I picked this topic, uh, Jarrett, because it's something that not too many people are talking about right now. And I actually presented this at a national conference last year, and it really garnered a lot of interest. Uh, last time I was here, I was talking about tips for grant writing, you know, a far more general topic. But now we're going to talk about social media. And one of the things social media does for us is it does help us get known. Why do we want to be known? Why is it so important? Well, you and I know that when you meet somebody for the first time, whether it's a new friend, a friend of a friend, uh, a work colleague, you've got to know them and eventually get to like them. And then liking builds to trust. Now, this is something I learned through some marketing geniuses out there. They said, you know, know, like, and trust. Remember those three words. So it's important for your nonprofit, for you to be known in the community and well-respected, liked, and ultimately trusted so that people will seriously consider investing their 
time or their money in your mission. And we're talking about fundraising. So being trusted is important. You're, you're being entrusted with somebody else's money. It's a big deal. That is a big deal. And I never really would have thought, you know, that social media plays a role in the success of grants. So uh, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense because I too have heard that same no like and trust, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, share with us then, you know, what this means to, to be known, especially on social media. What is this exposure that we, that you're talking about that we need to garner on social media platforms? Well, the first thing I would encourage, if if our listeners and watchers haven't done it already, is pick a form of social media where you want to become really active. Now, here's a mistake I made a couple of years ago. I realized, wow, there's LinkedIn, which I've been on forever. There's Facebook. There is Twitter. There's Instagram, even TikTok. And I got so excited by all of them that I was posting on all of them all the time, except TikTok. (laughs) So... It was too much. I was spreading myself so thin. You probably know the feeling, right? So the best piece of advice I ever got from somebody about social media is so simple. It's pick one and really stay active and engaged on it. So so I picked two, of course. I have to overachieve. (laughs) (laughs) But I picked two. So I'm very active on LinkedIn. That's my primary one. Mm -hmm. The reason being... If you are working with a nonprofit or your fundraiser privately or, or with government, whatever the case may be, LinkedIn is the number one platform out there right now for B2B sales. So business to business communications. That's where you want to be. My second favorite is Facebook. And I have a business page, Grants for Good. You can find it on Facebook. And I like that one too, because I can post a lot on it but it's not nearly as interactive as LinkedIn. So that's that's the one I would encourage you. I think Instagram's great if you're really into visuals. Uh, Twitter can be fun if you enjoy it. For me, I'm picking LinkedIn with a sprinkle of Facebook. I would agree. That's my number one platform is LinkedIn. But my question for you, Margaret, as it comes to grants is often the grant writer or the person overseeing these, these proposals and managing are also not the same person doing the social media platforms. So how do we best work together to accomplish this goal? Well, that's a a great question. I mean, the first thing is responsibility of the grant writer or fundraiser, people tuning in today, is that you know you have the difficult job of, first of all, identifying what kind of foundations or what kind of state and federal grants do you really want to apply for for your organization? Which ones are the best fit for your work? So where the two people can work together, your social media marketing or your grant funder, grant writer rather, the grant professional or writer can identify a list of foundations that they really want to know more about after they've done the research. And you know, I've taught this course as well as how to find the best funders. But once you have those, go to Facebook and LinkedIn and see if they have a page. And if so, you're going to want to connect with them. Now, I got to pause for a moment, Jarrett, because some of the clients I work with, they have such small budgets that they don't have two separate staff doing this. Sometimes it falls on the executive director to do everything, or it falls on somebody implementing big programs to do all of that, to identify the funders, to get active on social media. So I want to share some really three quick tips today that I think our listeners can take with us and use right away. Great. Give it to us. What's tip number one? All right. Tip number one. So I've already done kind of a pre-tip. Your challenge today is to pick at least about three to five foundations or funders that you think are going to be a good fit with your organization. Find out if they're on social media. So tip one is to see which funders are on, in my case, LinkedIn or Facebook, which is what I use, and then make sure that you click the like or follow them and really be diligent about every day going to their page to see what they're posting. Now, here's why this matters. Tip one, this is why it matters. You want to learn more about your funders, right? Mm -hmm. This is a great way to do it. Sure, their website is one way. The zillions of databases out there for funder research is another way. 
but social media is going to be the most up to date. I just posted today, you know, and yesterday, the day before, yeah. these are the most up to date. So look to your funders and find out who are they funding? Oftentimes they will share success stories about some of their grantees. Great. Because now you know what kind of organizations are they really interested in? Right. Sometimes Great. they will talk about new board members or new staff that have joined the foundation, in which case, guess what? You can connect on LinkedIn with those staff. So now you've got another point of entry with somebody at the foundation. You want to know who's who so that you have a person to speak with ultimately. Great advice. They, they just post all kinds of relevant, relevant things too, like um, their newest guidelines or even grant opportunities. So it's really worth doing that. Wonderful. Now that's fantastic. So, so all of you listening, uh, you heard the challenge is, is to pull out your list and connect with these funders. What's tip number two that you have for us? So tip number two is something that is not a one day thing. It's something you're going to be doing five to 10 minutes out of your day. And that is engaged with the people you just connected with. Now, this is advice I've received and don't kick yourself if you're not perfect because I don't always do it either. I connect with some great new people every day and it's really hard to carve out the time in our busy work schedules to be extremely consistent. But as best you can, even if it's every couple of days, engage with those funders. And what I mean by that is look at what they're posting and see if there's something you want to ask or comment about in the comments section, something that's useful and relevant. Not so much, thanks for sharing, but you might want to say, wow, that tip was really helpful because now I can use it to further our youth mentoring program in Rochester, New York, right? And now there's a sign that, oh, look what this person does. So it's another way of being known. It's also a way of opening up that two-way conversation with a funder that may otherwise not know you. So even going beyond the like um, or any of those other icons, you want to actually engage in the comment section. Have that engagement. I was going to ask him, and maybe I don't want to stop tip the number three, but what is that etiquette, right? Because the last thing I imagine we want to do, and the last thing that you're coaching, Margaret, is you know to constantly respond, check out our program, check out our program. Like, so what is the etiquette on that engagement level? Yeah, that's a good question. It's so just like our conversation here today it has to be real, authentic, relevant so does all of your engagement on any kind of social media. After a while, if you are um, just engaging for the sake of <laughs> flashing yourself in yeah. front of the funder, it, it really will become looked at as inauthentic and you don't wanna do that. So it's really a matter of doing it in a way that, that does feel authentic to you where you really have something relevant to say. And you're going to find that there are some people you're going to engage with more. So for me, for example, I've been working with, I'm in Rochester, New York, and I've been working with our local Rochester area community foundation for years. And I see a lot of their posts because the algorithm on LinkedIn says, oh, Margaret's always looking at these posts and she engages with them. So I'm going to see those show up a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I do engage with them not just in LinkedIn, but also through email and phone calling. So it does not feel spammy. If I started suddenly engaging every day with a brand new foundation that had never heard of me or my company or any of my clients, it would look a little suspicious. It would look a little odd. So, you know, you might want to ease into that if yeah. you're starting with somebody new. Great advice. Very, very good advice. So what's tip number three that you have for us here? Okay, well, tip number one was connecting with the funder, right? Research and connect with some funders. Tip two is engage with them. After a while of engaging with the funders, why not invite them, tip three, to follow you or your organization? So now that relationship goes both ways, where they will see your post show up on their feed more regularly as well. So that's number three deliberately because if I just met you on the street, Jarrett, I wouldn't say, hi, how are you doing? Do you want to come over to my house? <laughs> right. On the other way. <laughs> right. I don't know with you and your well, energy. You wouldn't. Yeah. 
you and your energy, I might say, absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, having that. Having those connections is is really important. Um, so so that third tip really is asking them to connect back with you. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I would recommend doing that and then you know continue that engagement. Now, here's the responsibility that comes with this third step is if you are a nonprofit that has your own social media page on LinkedIn or your own social media page on Facebook, for example. It comes with the responsibility of you posting very relevant content on a regular basis. Okay, so it's not a quick fix, but this can be fun too. So one thing I would recommend is on your social media pages, be sure to post often. And someone's going to say, well, what does that mean? How often? You could post daily, but I would say if you post three times a week, if you can do that, that's pretty good for the algorithm on LinkedIn, which is sort of a mystery, but I work with a consultant that is a specialist in LinkedIn and she has given me some great tips. And one of them is post three or four times a week daily, if you can. Yeah. And make sure that it's relevant. It's timely. It's not spam. Uh, Jarrett, we talked at the beginning of the show. I posted a picture of my son playing golf. I have to toss in things like that once in a while. It was a Friday. I was just feeling like I wanted to share some joy and his face just emanated the joy. And I said, share something that brings you joy, right? We need that. That's the human side of us. We're not just work animals all the time. So once in a while, I'll put that into a LinkedIn post. Um, Just last week, I decided, you know what? One of the biggest challenges that the people I work with have is budgets. It's really hard to create a grant project budget for funders, and they're all different. So I shared three tips, one each day that hopefully helps the people that I'm connected to develop better project budgets. So I'll tell you what, you could never run out of ideas for posts. All you've got to do is listen to what people are saying. Listen to what they need help with. What are their questions? And those are the kinds of things that I like to address in my LinkedIn posts. Now, let's say you're a nonprofit that works on a youth mentoring program. Why not showcase with permission one of the families or kids that have been helped by your program? You can showcase that. You can showcase a fundraiser that your organization just had, or it's a great way to invite funders to your fundraisers whether in person or virtually. So there's a ton of things you can post. And are you also recommending that we we use video content as well? Like what's, you mentioned the algorithm and I know I feel like the algorithm's always changing, but should we include some videos in here? I, I recommend mixing up your posts so that they stay interesting. So there are times you may want to, the other day I reshared a blog post by one of my favorite bloggers, Vu Le, V-U-L-E. Oh, he is the wittiest writer. I love reading his post. I thought I've got to share this one. So it's, you know, check out earlier this week, it's on there. So sometimes I will reshare articles that I think are really useful. And other times I'll share my own tips, sometimes pictures, video, absolutely. I wouldn't go every day with video, but I think it's a nice thing to sprinkle in throughout your social media posts. Right. Apparently the live videos really do increase your visibility in the algorithm. And what I mean by that is when you're on LinkedIn, you'll see a whole order of different posts. You want to be near the top of that order for other people. Sometimes live video streaming does that. The, the other thing you can do is, um, is when you connect with people, there's a little bell icon. If you ring someone's bell or if you click that bell next to their name, you're going to see every time they post something. So it, it's kind of a, um, a polite way of stalking, if I should use that word. But if, Jared, if I want to see what you're posting every day, or if I want to see what, uh, you know, Julia, who's not here today, what she's posting, I would click that bell icon. And then every day when I get into LinkedIn, I will see in my feed something you've posted. So if you find someone really interesting, 
do that so that you don't miss what they're saying. I just found that bell and I think it might be on Instagram as well. Uh, So there's several different social medias that allow you uh, that notification when someone makes a post so that you can respond in a timely manner. So do you recommend that we ring that bell, as you say, for our funders so that when we connect with them, because we're going to accept our challenge, right, viewers and listeners, (laughs) you know, that today we're really going to connect with our funders. Do do we take that extra level or should we wait a while? I, I think you can take that extra level because what happens is when you click that bell icon or when you click the blue button in LinkedIn that says follow, mm-hmm. Facebook also has a similar notification process. When you do that, it is not spammy because it doesn't mean that the funder is seeing more of your post. It means that you are seeing more of the post of your funders. Right. So I'm glad you brought that up. It really means that you won't miss anything that they're saying okay? so that you have the opportunity to click on that post and say, hmm, maybe I want to comment on that. Or maybe I want to build upon that information and share something in addition. Or maybe I want to just let this one pass. So it gives you that opportunity at least to do it. So as we're connecting with our social media, um, you know, accounts, I'm curious for those grants that we already receive funding from, are we already, like, are we taking that first step, Margaret, to say, okay, these are our current funders. So let's make sure first and foremost that we're connected with them. And then are you also looking at prospective funders and then engaging in that kind of like relationship building at that at that level as well so we're kind of looking at the entire gamut of funders absolutely i think we really need to look at both and you know as we were talking on this show up till now in my mind i was really thinking of prospective funders new people sure. that you want to start to connect with mm-hmm. but you just brought up an excellent point and that is what about the funders that have already invested in your cause in your mission in your nonprofit what about them? Well, I'm friends with many of them. And, and oftentimes I will hear from them. Why don't nonprofits put us on their email list once they get a grant for us? You know, I want to know what's going on. I want to get their newsletter. I want to be invited to events. And so as in Grants for Good, as a grant writing consultant, I advise nonprofits to do this all the time. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sure. But it's really really good advice that you can use that's so easy to do. And just like doing that, why not engage your current funders on social media as well? You can even do a shout out to them if it's okay with them, if they don't wish to remain anonymous on your page. You can say thank you so much to the, I'm going to use Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation because everybody knows them. And you can say thank you to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for funding our transformational, you know, high school education project in Austin, Texas, or wherever you may be. And by the way, another little trick, I love this one too, is when you say Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, click the at icon as you are typing and you will see that their page comes up. It's a way of tagging them like you might do on Facebook or Instagram. So it's a way of tagging them as well. And then they will know that you have just um, let, you know, you've just promoted them essentially. And they do receive a notification on that. They so will. That, that tagging does give a notification, but I think that's fantastic. And I agree with you, you know, when you have this award and you want to shout it from the rooftops with their permission, of course, yes. you know, yeah. that's a great opportunity to, to share with your community and, and to engage deeper in that relationship. It really is. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's a lot of fun little tips and tricks. It may sound overwhelming to some of our viewers and listeners, but believe me, just like everything else, when there's a habit established, it will work. So for me, I carve out a little bit of time at the beginning of each day or mid morning when I need a break from all the other things I'm doing. And I just take 15 minutes to post something, to engage with some other people on post and see what's new. That's interesting. Great habit. And and I can already imagine, you know, so many of our viewers are going to say, okay, you know, I'm drinking that Kool-Aid market. I'm I'm going to take this challenge. I'm going to connect with funders on social media um, and, and start to, you know, have that 
engagement, because as you said, that engagement is, is really, really important. Um, before we sign off, I, you have something special you want to share with our viewers. So would you share uh, what this uh, grant writing discount code offers? I, I would love to. If, um, if, if you are wanting to learn more about grant writing, I realized today we talked entirely about social media because it's just a fun topic and something that you don't hear very often. But if you're listening to the show and you're thinking, okay, I do do some grant writing, but I'm not exactly getting the results I want. Or you're thinking to yourself, wow, I hardly have ever written a grant or never, ever have, then this is definitely the course for you. If you are somebody who already is doing great, then, then bypass this. But if not, check it out, allaboutgrantwriting.com. It's eight modules. It's a self-paced online course, and I teach the whole thing. So you'll learn everything from how to find those best funders right to writing every aspect of a grant, including those hard to do budgets. So if you're a listener of the show, you're a friend of Jarrett and Julia's, then just use the NP show 20 code NP show 20, you'll get 20% off. Yes. Um, I've also got a freebie for you. If you go to grantsforgood.com, you can download my seven step grant success guide. So check that out as well. And uh, I want you to have the best success possible with your funders and with social media. I would love to hear how it goes. Absolutely. Those for you listening on our podcast, um, it's grants for good and the number four, not written out. So grants, the number four, good.com. And of course, uh, take advantage of this discount code if you're interested in the grant writing offer opportunity that uh, Margaret offers. So, so, so honored to have you back here. You know, I would have never thought early in my career that social media ties into the success of grant writing. And this episode, you know, all, all almost 30 minutes, it goes by so quickly, proves to us that it really does. So thank you for sharing these great tips and connectivity of social media with, with us today. Thrilled to have you here. Thrilled to have our presenting sponsors, which we take your advice and we connect with them as well because, you know, they support us. So to have their support as presenting sponsors, we're so very honored. Uh, you'll find that Julia and I both, as well as our company, share a lot of information from, from these companies. We tag them and give them all kinds of shout out like the ones that I want to do right now. Thank you so very much to all of our presenting sponsors that keep these conversations like the one we just had with Margaret today going and growing. So thank you to Bloomerang American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with the National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, and the Nonprofit Thought Leader. I know I mentioned earlier in the show to do yourself a favor and to check these companies out. I hope you did it during the episode because Margaret gave you some great information about how to connect with your grant funders on social media. But now's a good time to check out these funders so you won't miss anything uh, from us there. Margaret, thank you. I hope that all of our viewers and listeners are are busy typing away in their social media platforms and connecting with their funders and then engaging and inviting them to connect with them. So thanks for these tips and tricks. It's so glad to have you back. You're so welcome. It was my pleasure. And I wish you all the best and ever, all of your listeners and viewers. Yeah, let's go get that grant money, right? Like it's there. Get on let's social connect. media. Hey, connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's yes. stay in touch. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Margaret, and thanks for all of you that have joined us today. We end every episode by saying, please stay well so you can continue to do well. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.